Is it a coincidence that on the same week, the same day, the same month, that the price of lithium dropped by around 30%? The world's first mass-produced sodium-ion battery-powered car was revealed? I don't know. You tell me in the comments section below. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. The new merch store, it's open. It's live. I've just made an order from the store just so I can try some gear on for you guys to show you the sizing. Check out the store. It's got a whole bunch of different items there. And some of them are not really electric Viking. They're just more to do with electric cars. You can check those out too. We make about 10% profit and all the profits, of course, go to the cancer fight for my wife, Shanna, who's going through right now, stage four colorectal cancer. So thank you for your support with that and with the GoFundMe campaign. Now, the new sodium powered batteries. Are they a real thing? Are they really gonna take off? People are asking the question, is that legit? Yes, it is, 100% legit. I think the most common battery we're gonna see over the next one, two, three years will be, when we're talking about sodium batteries, will be the hybrid sodium batteries. If you combine lithium ion battery with a sodium ion battery, you get the best of both worlds. They start really well in the cold, right? That's one of the flaws of lithium batteries in the cold, not as good. Just try and using your mobile phone when it's minus five degrees Celsius. It doesn't work that well unless you're holding your phone, you know, under your shirt or in your groin or somewhere like that. So there you go. Sodium and lithium together, they're actually the best of both worlds. In many ways, it makes perfect sense to combine the two technologies together, but you will be able to find cheaper EVs with sodium batteries. Now, right now, is it cheaper for companies BYD and CATL, the two biggest battery companies in the world, they are making sodium batteries. They say that there'll be sodium batteries in their EVs by the end of this year. When I say their EVs, CATL, they're not really a known electric car company, but they do make electric cars. They're invested in various companies. We will see their batteries in EVs by the end of this year. And I'm saying sodium only batteries. That enables those cars to be cheaper in theory, but it won't actually be true because until they can really truly mass manufacture them, it won't be cheaper to make those batteries than lithium ion phosphate. And that's what the companies themselves have disclosed. Now CATL said, I believe it was the year before last, that sodium ion batteries would eventually become around 30% cheaper than lithium iron phosphate. Now lithium iron phosphate are the cheapest batteries that you can get that are mass produced on the market right now. So 30% cheaper than that is massive, absolutely huge. Now this new electric car that debuts, that has debuted a sodium ion battery is spectacularly affordable. Makes you think, well, maybe they've already hit, maybe they've already worked out how to make really cheap sodium ion batteries already. I don't know. Maybe. Hina battery, surprisingly, I'd never heard of them before today, has become the first battery maker to put sodium ion batteries in EVs. And of course it happened in China. So the unveiling of the C Hole E10X vehicle shows that sodium ion batteries will begin to be used in passenger cars this year. And for those of you who don't know much about the history of sodium ion batteries, they have been actually worked on for many, many years. It's not a brand new thing. They've been around for a while. It's more that they've been sort of commercially developed recently by the two biggest battery companies in the world. That's led to other companies wanting to make them as well. And of course, what else has done this? Well, the cost of lithium, lithium carbonate costs went up by a factor of about 50 times, just ridiculous amounts that come back down a lot this year, but nowhere near down to what they were years ago when the price was just much, much lower. Lithium costs just lead companies to go, well, okay, what are we gonna do? What's the solution here? You know, companies like Toyota, they're just so brain dead. They can't work out that that's what entrepreneurs do. That's what battery companies do. That's what that's what the market does. The market doesn't just go, oh, why? woe is me. There's not enough lithium. Oh, we'll just cry and not make cars with EV batteries in them. We'll make one kilowatt hour lithium hybrid garbage technology batteries. We're talking garbage technology with so-called pretend electric cars that just drive on forever. Have you seen Toyota's marketing? Their cars apparently will just drive forever without charging, self-charging batteries, self-charging, yeah, miraculous self-charging. So anyway, that's what Toyota says. The truth is the market does not work that way. The media are trying to brainwash you to think it does, that, oh, there's not enough lithium. 
Oh, no, well, it can't work. Ah, doesn't work that way. Entrepreneurs, businesses, they find a way. They find a solution. There's all kinds of batteries. I've, on this channel, we've talked about so many different batteries. And, you know, lots of them are being produced. It's not like they're all just mythical concepts that I talk about on this channel. But many of them are real. Many of them are being made right now. Iron flow batteries, vanadium batteries, you know, sodium ion batteries, sodium hybrid batteries, lithium ion phosphate batteries, batteries with more manganese so you can reduce the lithium content. There are so many different ways to make it happen. So this unknown Chinese power battery maker has begun putting sodium ion batteries in passenger cars, potentially marking the beginning. In fact, not potentially, marking the beginning of a big change in the battery industry in the market for affordable passenger electric vehicles. Now, they won't be used anytime soon in mid-range, higher priced electric cars. They'll purely be used in more affordable electric cars to bring the price down for those cheaper EVs, right? That's the whole idea here. Battery maker Hino Battery today unveiled three sodium ion battery cell products and announced a partnership with Anhui Yangwu Automobile Group Corporation or JAC, one of the biggest automakers in China, which has made one of its first models, the first to carry sodium ion batteries. Now, CNEV Post says that Hino Battery and Seahole, I've talked about Seahole on this channel before, by the way, a joint venture brand between JAC and Volkswagen and we have jointly built a test vehicle with sodium ion batteries based on the latest Seahole E10X model. So technically, this is a Volkswagen EV, well, 50% of it or sort of, sort of a little bit less, but around about there. It's a Volkswagen electric car using a sodium ion battery. Who would have thought Volkswagen would be first? Amazing. Now, the test vehicle has a battery pack with a capacity of 25 kilowatt hours, energy density of 120 watts per kilo, in comparison to the average energy, energy density of, say, a lithium ternary battery of around 200 watts per kilo, or a lithium ion phosphate battery of around 160 watts per kilo, the energy density is decreased by about 20%, which is fine, totally fine for more affordable EVs, of course, Energy storage, even more fine. I mean, sodium iron for energy storage, that's a totally different story. That's the that's the game changer we're talking about here. Just for EVs, that's more of a, that's a, probably a smaller market. Energy storage, yeah, it's finished for lithium when, when it comes to energy storage, but that's going to take a few years. Now, the model has a range of 252 kilometers and fast charging. And we don't know what the speed of fast charging is, but they say it has fast charging. Energy density, they say at the cell level is 140 watts per kilo, at the pack level, 120 watts per kilo. So sometimes you can get misled a little bit because you read energy density of a product and it's actually talking about the pack level or the cell level, and people can get confused between the two. Obviously, at pack level, energy density is always going to be a bit lower. Now, for comparison, the regular version of the C Hole E10X has two pack capacities. One is a 19.7 kilowatt hour pack and the other one is a 31.4 kilowatt hour pack. They have a range of 200 kilometers and 302 kilometers respectively. They use lithium ion phosphate batteries. The high capacity pack has an energy density of 141 watts per kilo. Not a lot of difference, right? 120 versus 141. When you're talking about cheaper lithium ion phosphate batteries versus sodium ion batteries, well, they're actually not that different. The Seahole E10X is available in seven versions with a price range starting at $6,800 and going up to around $11,000. $6,800 for a car this size. Well, it's bigger than a Hongwan Mini EV, you know, the General Motors Mini EV that Mary Barris says she's changed the world with, which she has actually. But anyway, that's another story. It's bigger than one of those. So it's incredibly affordable for $6,800. Now, are they mass manufacturing them? Not yet. I mean, this is more of a demonstration. They're saying you'll be able to buy one of these, but when, I don't know exactly. We judge that the application of sodium ion batteries in the new energy vehicle market will start with the A00 class EVs, meaning the mini K cars, 
which is why we chose a model like the Seahole E10X for our installation trials, a post on Seahole's official WeChat account said. The Sony Mine battery technology and performance can be used in mid to large sized EVs as it matures further, the executive said. In other words, when the energy density of Sony Mine batteries improves, they then see them being used in bigger electric cars. But until then, they think it's these batteries are really going to be reserved just for smaller cars. Now, the partnership with Hina Battery is a significant exploration, they say, and Seahole will continue to monitor the application of sodium ion batteries in the future and launch related products at the right time. But the big thing is here, the unveiling of this vehicle, of this sodium ion battery technology, it is the beginning. It is the beginning of the future. The future of batteries is not what Toyota thinks it is, which is just lithium heavy you know, high energy density, lithium only only batteries. It's absolutely not. In fact, the majority of the world's batteries by 2030 will be sodium batteries. That's the most likely play. That's the most likely scenario to happen here because sodium is so much cheaper than lithium. It's so abundant. It's one of the Earth's most abundant, easily accessible materials. And I mean, sodium ion batteries are actually already being used in two wheeled vehicles and in energy storage now, today. So this is not some proprietary solid state battery technology that we need to wait 77 years for. This is really a thing happening right now. For example, on the 29th of July, 2021, CHL unveiled its first generation sodium ion battery claiming that the single unit energy density had reached 160 watts per kilo, the highest level in the world, which is comparable, directly comparable to lithium ion phosphate packs. And then they said, those packs using sodium ion batteries would actually eventually within a few years become 30% cheaper than the LFP packs that they make. Overall, the energy density of the first generation sodium ion batteries is slightly lower than that of lithium ion battery tech, but it has clear advantages in low temperature performance and fast charging, they say, especially in high power application scenarios in alpine regions the company said. So CATL is saying, you know what? We sell LFP batteries. We're going to sell sodium ion batteries. The sodium ion batteries will have some significant advantages, but if you combine the two together, they'll have the best of both worlds. You see my point here with hybrids, hybrid batteries, not hybrid cars. Analysts believe sodium ion batteries have an energy density between lithium ion and lead acid batteries, but have a lower cost than lithium ion batteries. Now that's not necessarily correct. It really depends on the company you're talking about. Analysts don't really have any idea what they're talking about at this point in time. They're just guessing. Sodium ion batteries are suitable for areas that do not require high energy density, but are cost sensitive energy storage and will mainly be used for that purpose in two wheel vehicles and in smaller, more affordable electric cars for the next couple of years until that energy density begins to improve, which it definitely will. So who else is using them? Well, here's where things start to get interesting. BYD are saying that they will be launching electric cars by the end of this year with sodium batteries. So which car will they come in? Well, people believe that BYD will mass produce sodium ion batteries in the second quarter of 2023, as in, as in within a couple of months, and they'll be used in the Chin EV, the Dolphin, and the new Seagull. So BYD will be likely the first manufacturer in the world to mass produce sodium ion batteries going into EVs, which will be sold not just in China, but all around the world. So whilst Volkswagen is showing you this demonstration, the truth is BYD are years ahead of Volkswagen. In fact, they're years ahead of everyone when it comes to sodium ion batteries and getting them into cars. And that is the trick. Now, automakers have known about LFP batteries for years, but have they been using them? No. Tesla, yes. China, yes. Outside of Tesla and China, LFP hasn't really been used in the West. That's been one of Tesla's big advantages versus Volkswagen, Hyundai, Ford, General Motors. Yeah, Ford is now starting to say, well, Tesla was right. LFP is what we need to do. But maybe, maybe Ford needs to actually move a step ahead of that. Maybe what Ford needs to do is to focus on sodium ion batteries at their new factory in the United States that they're building with CATL. Maybe they are. 
They just haven't told us. Now that would be a serious chess move from Jim Farley. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and thank you for watching. Bye-bye.